Tweet Shara 1 LinkedIn 0 email a hard Brexit of the kind Theresa May is proposing would mean if services slump for the UK economy, a new report has found. Without the same access to the EU for our world-beating services, we could see our national output drop by 6% and lose £20 billion a year in tax revenue which we might otherwise spend on our public services. Talk about a Brexit dividend in advance of next week's budget is nonsense. There would be a Brexit deficit instead. Our services sector accounts for 80% of our economy and about 40% of our exports. And services doesn't just mean bankers in the city of London, although financial services are a huge boost for government coffers. Services jobs include advertising, marketing, consulting, insurance, pensions, accounting, legal, telecoms, it, engineering, architecture, business services, travel, film, TV and other creative arts. And while services play the biggest economic role in London and the southeast, they are essential to every region and nation of the UK. The Federal Trust Report says, if there is one area where it would be inadvisable for a government to willingly intervene to its detriment, then it would be in the service sector. But that's exactly what May's hard Brexit proposal for our future relationship with the EU does. It focuses on a common rulebook for goods, while only vaguely promising new arrangements for services. In particular, the document admits that what May wants will not replicate the EU's passporting regimes. Passporting is a series of arrangements, for example mutual recognition of standard practices and professional qualifications, which mean a supplier can sell a service throughout the entire EU single market without further barriers, so long as they conform to EU rules. The reason the UK government gives for ending passporting is that it wants regulatory freedom where it matters most after Brexit to be best place to capitalize on the industries of the future. Essentially, to outcompete EU rivals. In this scenario, the EU can do nothing other than treat the UK as a third country, which might change its regulations at any time in order to gain advantage over EU firms. Brexiters clearly think this freedom is worth losing access to the single market. This is as much of a fantasy as their swashbuckling global trade deals or £350 million per week for the NHS. In the short term, we're damaging our economy by throwing up obstacles between us and the huge market next door. In future, international rules for services will increasingly be set by the biggest economies, whether that's on data, finance or artificial intelligence. The medium-sized UK will most likely follow the rules of others, and often that will mean the EU's rules. That are stay detached with our own idiosyncratic regime, watching business investment go across the channel. The Federal Trust says either staying in the EU or becoming a member of the EEA would both be more economically beneficial than May's hard Brexit. But while the EEA option might solve the economic problems, we'd still be following EU rules without a say at the top table, certainly not taking back control. It is crucial that people grasp the importance of services to our future prosperity before it's too late. And if they don't like the guaranteed damage May's Brexit will have on them, they must have the chance to say so in a people's vote. Tweet Shara 1 LinkedIn 0 email edited by Hugo Dixon.